Hi everyone, so today we talked about mitosis. Not just something for when your sister steps on your foot. Mitosis. It's late, sorry. I need to make this video before I can post it for tomorrow. So you're getting loopy, Miss Gilman. Anyway, we talked about mitosis, making copies of cells for when you need to repair, grow, reproduce, regenerate, all the fun R's for making new cells. But I'm gonna do that experiment I did in class so that if you missed it in class, you can watch it again. But I need to get my science gear on one moment. Okay, thank you. Now I'm lab ready. So for this experiment, I have two mystery liquids. One of these is a nice glass of lemonade. One of these is bottled lemon juice and water. How can we tell which is which? I don't know, look pretty similar. I guess there's one way to find out. They both smell lemony. So to make sure, actually at this point, I put these in the fridge, I mixed in some extra water. They really do look alike now. In class I could tell them apart, but now I can't. So we're just gonna have to do this the hard way, like I did earlier. So one of these, I don't know, which should I pick? It's gonna be really sour, the other's gonna taste just like lemonade, so. <whistles> Not lemonade, that one's lemon and water. Lemonade. Yeah! What's the difference, you ask? The secret recipe. What's the secret recipe of a cell? <laughs> DNA. That was more dramatic than intended. All right, back to the lesson. Welcome back, DigiBio buddies. We are moving on to workbook four, mitosis. Mitosis, also called the cell cycle, is the process in which a cell makes an exact copy of itself. So here we have these lovely donuts showing us the movement of the chromosomes and the organelles as this cell reproduces. So why do cells need to divide or make copies of themselves, you ask? They need to repair, replace, grow, regenerate, reproduce, Anytime you might need to make new tissues, you need to make new cells because your tissues are made out of cells. So that's why our cells have to have a way to copy themselves. We talked about this in class today, but if we watch these little guys do mitosis, we have one original parent cell. It splits into two identical cells and then we end up with two replicas of the first original cell and that 46 rec represents the chromosomes in the cell. So the short version of mitosis or the cell cycle, a cell makes a copy of its DNA and then splits out into two new identical cells. All of your body cells do this and we learned earlier today the fancy term for your body cell is a somatic cell. That's a regular old cell like a skin cell or a lung tissue cell or a muscle cell or a bone, brain, those are called neurons, any of those, any of your body cells, if you think of a body part that's made out of cells, those are somatic cells. They have 46 chromosomes, a complete set of your DNA. Chromoso chromos there stands for chromosomes. And the only ones that aren't considered body cells are called gametes. Those have 23, 23 and me, because those are half of a somatic cell, half a body cell. That's why we need both sperm and egg to fertilize to make a complete zygote. Think back to the experiment I did with the lemonade and lemon juice for this slide. So we had lemon juice and lemonade in the cup. We could tell from my reaction or to the way it tasted or the color in the cup earlier today, but by the video you couldn't tell from the color. And what do you need to be able to replicate the mystery liquid? The secret recipe, of course. This might seem silly for lemon juice and lemonade because the recipe might just be sugar, water, and lemons or lemons and water, but what if I were to say, I want you to make a lemon meringue pie? You're certainly gonna need a recipe for that unless you know how to make one off the top of your head, in which case, let me know how you do that. Um, so you would need the recipe, and if the lemonade instructions are the recipe of the lemonade, the cell's instructions are the DNA like the lemon juice versus the lemonade, to make an exact replica of itself, whether that's a glass of lemonade or your fancy complicated cells, the cell needs to have all the information first. So our story from earlier today, before we get into this, let's say you have 
an important assignment that I made you handwrite or you did a project that has to be a physical thing. You put it in your backpack. Little do you know, there's an old mushy banana at the bottom of your backpack. You go outside and it's raining. Now all the stuff in your backpack is soggy and has banana mush on the bottom of it. How does your assignment look when you go to turn it in? Like your dog ate it. So before our cells go moving around their chromosomes and making copies of themselves, we need to make a copy of the DNA. Think back to when I was the mRNA in the library. Stealing the recipe. So we have to protect the DNA. It has to stay safe, it can't leave the nucleus. We need a backup plan. You wouldn't want to get rid of your only copy of something if it's something really important, like your DNA. We have to keep it safe, and we have to keep our original safe. These are all ideas you generated in class earlier. Some vocab words, key terms. Chromatin, we have rainbow spaghetti to represent our chromatin, is a mass of DNA and protein that makes up a chromosome. Chromosome is a tightly coiled mass of DNA and protein made out of the chromatin. A chromatid is one half of the chromosome, so depending on how the artist has drawn it, because remember, if our cells are like the globe, the earth, there isn't necessarily an up or a down, it's just the way we as humans think about it. So, uh, the top half of the chromosome could be the chromatid in some diagrams, and this side half could be the chromatid in some diagrams, it depends on the diagram you're looking at. But both halves of the chromosome are identical to each other. They're made of the same DNA, and that'll become important later. Last, we have the centromere. This is where the two points of the chromatids connect. It is at the center of the chromosome. Back to the chromatin. Our reference today in class was if you try to pack a suitcase and you throw all your clothing in, you are much less likely to pack everything, and it won't all fit. And if you go to look for something at the last minute, you can't find it. Before the DNA goes traveling around the cell to do something fancy like mitosis, it needs to get packed up really neatly. That's the purpose of a chromosome bundling up into this nice, neat X shape. So the chromatin's a big sloppy mess. It can hang out and be okay where it is inside the nucleus, safe and sound. But if it's going to go moving around the cell, we want to wrap it up into a nice, neat chromosome so that no important genes like how to code for fingers get lost in transit. Back to the centromere, we were talking about it before, now we're going to zoom in. So here's our chromosome, the centromere keeps both chromatids together, and let's zoom in because I think there's somebody on there. Who is that? What is that? Why? That is the centromere cat. You might be thinking this is just a meerkat, like Timon from The Lion King, but really this is the centromere cat. He keeps the centromere together. Here's another diagram for you. This orange thing is a whole chromosome, the orange X. The centromere, or centromere cat, is at the center of the chromosome. It keeps those chromatids together. The chromatid is half a chromosome and both chromatids are identical. Long version. There are five special, specific stages of the cell cycle. Mitosis. Don't worry, the next slide zooms into this process, but we talked about this earlier. We can see that this is the cell. They only draw the organelles that you absolutely need to know about during mitosis because it'd be way too complicated. Now, this looks like a monster with a mouthful of gummy worms, but it is not. The turquoise represents the cytoplasm. The cell membrane is around the outside like it always is. The yellow part is the nucleus full of chromosomes. And if you zoom into these little spider sunflower things, it's very blurry, but you can see two Tic Tacs. Those are centrioles. We learned about centrioles way back in unit two. They help with cell division. We're finally going to see them shine. So here are all the different stages of the cell cycle. I'm about to go into those in more detail. But the things that are missing from these cells, we are going to assume they're still there, they're just not pictured, because it would be too complicated to see all these important things moving around during mitosis, while we still can see ribosomes and mitochondria and Golgi bodies and lysosomes and all those other fun friends. So we don't put them in the diagrams, but we remember that they're still in there. These are just pictures. Stage one, interphase. The first stage actually occurs before cell division, but I like to call it stage one just so we remember it's an important part. The cell grows and it makes a copy of its DNA so it can prepare to divide. 
This is one of the most important stages. Remember, if we're going to move things around and make copies of things, we don't want to lose or ruin our original, so we always have to copy the DNA first. Growth is important because cells need to produce more of their organelles before they start dividing. Copying the DNA, the fancy term is called replication. The cell makes a copy of its DNA in its nucleus. We learned about this at the end of last unit. The DNA unzips and new bases come in and we get two identical daughter strands. The DNA and proteins form thread-like structures called chromosomes that we just learned about. Then the cell contains two identical sets of those chromosomes before it splits out. So interphase is all about preparing for division. The cell creates structures that are going to help it divide into two new cells. And the key term I like to remember for interphase, the most important thing, so I'm gonna write it in all caps, is copy the DNA. So if all you remember about interphase is copy the DNA, I'm okay with that. Step two, prophase. Chromosomes in the nucleus condense. They were starting in the last stage and now they're you can tell that they're full X-shaped chromosomes. The pairs of centrioles up top move to opposite sides of the cell. Sometimes you'll hear those called poles. Your homework called it a pole, like the North and South Pole. Those mean ends of this sphere that's a cell. And spindle fibers form to bridge between the ends of the cells. So we'll see that in more detail on the next slide. But these little tiny spiky things around the centrioles those white parts are the spindle fibers. Those are going to grow longer and they're going to help the chromosomes move around the cell. So I like to remember with prophase, P is for prepare because the cell is preparing to divide. Then we have metaphase. Each Chromosome lines up in the middle and attaches to the spindle fiber at its centromere. That's a lot of new words. So here are our chromosomes in the middle, pink and blue. Our centrioles are at the edges with the spindle fibers are the white things now. Here's a really cool gif of the chromosomes lining up. Watch them move. So this is metaphase. They're going to line up in the middle. Those are our centrioles, here are our spindle fibers, our chromosomes are our X's, and they're nice and neatly lined up now. And M for metaphase, M is for middle, because the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. Sometimes you'll hear this called the equator, just like the equator of the Earth, it's around the center of the sphere. One last little detail about metaphase, here we can see the centromeres are those dots, no meerkats on this slide, the circles at the center of the chromosomes, the spindle fibers attach to those and they're going to start dragging those chromosomes apart on the next slide. Next we have anaphase, step four. So the chromosomes split at the centromere. So chromosomes were X's and now you can see it's just a half. And remember, those halves are called chromatids. And if they came from the same chromosome, they're sisters. They're the sister chromatids. And they're going to move apart to the opposite ends of the cell. Here we can see in the diagram, the chromosomes are being split in the middle and a chromatid is getting pulled by the centromere to both sides. The centriole is attaching with the spindle fiber and dragging those chromosomes apart from each other. Remember, those were replicated chromosomes. They had double the information we needed. So now, all the information is moving equally to both sides. So we'll end up with a new copy on both sides. And this is how those chromosomes get pulled around the cell. So sister chromatids move apart to opposite ends or opposite poles of the cell. A is for anaphase and A is for away because they move away from each other. Next we have telophase, which some pronounce telophase, but I'm going to keep calling it telophase, like telephone. Each cell has its own copy of the DNA, and the cells are ready to split. The nuclear membrane, which is the membrane around the nucleus, reforms around the genetic material around that DNA, and two new daughter cells will be created. So if we zoom in to this GIF of telophase, we can see... Those are our chromatids on both sides being pulled by the centrioles. The nucleus 
the membrane is going to reform around all of that genetic material and then it's back to rainbow spaghetti, it's back to chromatin, it's done traveling, you can unpack your suitcase and be as messy as you want and that's going to be the start of both new cells. So on this slide, T for telophase is for two new cells, two new daughter cells. The last stage is really part of telophase, it's called cytokinesis. Two identical daughter cells have been created. Here they are splitting. And what splitting organelle in this diagram gives cytokinesis its name? I'll give you a hint. Cyto is part of an organelle you might remember from unit two. Kinesis, if you are telekinetic, you can move things with your mind. Kinetic means movement. Kinetic energy is the energy an object picks up from moving. A kinesthetic learner, like some of you, is someone who learns best by doing things and manipulating things and moving around. So this is the moving of the cytoplasm. So go ahead and write down there what splitting organelle gives cytokinesis its name. Next we have a fun little acronym to remember the stages of mitosis. It's called IPMAT. I is for interphase, P is for prophase, M is for metaphase, A is for anaphase, T is for telophase. Welcome to Sesame Street by Ms. Gilman. Now we're going to put all of our little memory hooks on here and I'm going to change the color because why not? Interphase, copy the DNA. Prophase, prepare to split the cell and make new organelles. Metaphase, M is for middle. The chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. Anaphase, A for away. The chromatids move away from the center of the cell towards the opposite ends. T is for telophase and we also said it makes two new cells. The challenge. I would like you to insert circles and X's and lines to show me the movement of the chromosomes around the cell during mitosis. So you can see it goes in a cycle like this. So this is interphase. It's not labeled, but we can add a label right now. Interphase is done for you. We already have a copy of the DNA in this cell. So you can use the four chromosomes that you see. To go through, this is going to be challenging, but it's tonight's homework, and we'll go over it tomorrow. Go through what does the cell look like during prophase. Remember, you have all these helpful diagrams with different versions of different artists' renditions or images to help you through. What does the cell look like during prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and the two new daughter cells? And I will give you a hint. The two new daughter cells are going to look exactly like interphase of the original cell. If that is confusing and complicated, look at this. I have a cheat sheet for you. So here we have IPMAT up top, interphase. In this diagram, I left the DNA as chromatin. You can draw it as X's, which are chromosomes, or a scribble, which represents chromatin. So interphase, copy the DNA. Prophase, we're preparing to split the cell. The chromosomes are ready to go. Metaphase, our chromosomes have lined up in the middle. Notice we have spindle fibers and centrioles by them. Anaphase, the chromatids are half a chromosome. They're moving away from each other, being pulled by the spindle fibers attached to those centrioles. That dotted line shows you where the cell is going to split. Telophase, we get two new cells. This is where cytokinesis splits the cytoplasm, and those cells are both identical to each other and identical to the original cell. Again, if you want to draw chromatin in those or leave them as chromosomes, that's okay. If you want to draw chromosomes in there instead of chromatin, that's okay. Go ahead and do your own version on this slide. If you need more inspo, I have another set of diagrams for you that go through all the stages there. And lastly, a few facts to remember. Somatic cells are regular old body cells. You make two identical copies of the original cell at the end of mitosis. And all of your somatic cells, because you are a human, have 46 chromosomes. We'll learn about this word next time, but they're diploid, which means they're a complete set of genetic material. So again, interphase, 
We have chromatin inside the nucleus. Prophase, we're preparing. Our spindle fibers are starting to grow out of our centrioles. Here's our nucleus full of chromosomes, no longer chromatin. Metaphase, we have our centromeres at the center point of our chromosomes. Our spindle fibers are in green, and our centrioles are these little cylinders at the end. Anaphase, you can see the chromatids are starting to be pulled apart by the centrioles. It's starting to form two new cells. Telophase, our cells split out. They are called daughter cells and they look identical to our original interphase cell. These are our two new cells with 46 chromosomes in a human. All right, we did it. I will see you later.